what is the heart bondage see people who are in the heart bondage cannot make their own decision they are always controlled by something else or someone else in exodus 1 was 1 to 5 we can see the israelite they went to egypt and gave themselves to egypt due to the famine when there is no food they have no choice they go to egypt they thought they can have some food but as a result they become the slaves in egypt sometimes certain things seems to be very sweet and wonderful and joyful in the beginning later on it will become the most beautiful thing in your life so in the beginning you will enjoy it is so friendly it's so nice it's not harm it's not going to harm me it's harmless for me but later that will be the greatest danger for you that's what happened to them they thought in egypt because of joseph they can get food they can live a, a joyful a happy life but at the end they were serving in the hard bondage Egypt means the house of bondage. Bondage means you have been, you have been, it means you have been tied to something. You are burdened by something. There is no way out. There are taskmasters over them for the people where they will force these Israelites build the, the pyramids and everything. Okay? So now what happened here is this. They have no other choice. They are forced to build all the pyramids. See, even to this day, people are wondering how come there are such a big, huge buildings over there. There's no idea. They don't even understand the kind of technology that has been used in those days. This is God's doing, I'm telling you. God has strengthened the people. Likewise, you see, they are not eager to build the buildings, the pyramids. They are forced to do that. This is what we call as heart bondage. Okay? In the same way, in our life, the devil used many things to put hard bondages on us such as disease when you are in a disease there's a, a sickness on you you have to serve your sickness like the book the woman who are born for 18 years the book of luke 13 we can see for 18 years okay the woman was suffering she has to bend down she want to glorify god but she can't glorify god by standing she has to bend down and glorify god now, whose work is that the devil's work Jesus said, a spirit of infirmity. It means you are living a life without your own choice. You are being controlled by something else. Some, they are slaves to poverty. They can't live a life, a joyful life. They have to serve their, their hardship, have to work hard. And some, they are slaves to the debts. They have to keep on paying the debts lifelong. There's no way out. All these comes under the hard bondage of the people. But praise be to God. Today, the Lord is going to turn turn all the hard bondages to be a rest for you. In John chapter 8, 34, anyone who sins, they are a slave to sins. Many Christians today, they are struggling inwardly. They are struggling in their life. They are struggling because of their sins. They feel that it is the nature of life. But the truth is, sin is the main root cause for all the struggles that you are facing in your life. Without realizing, many of you think that this sin nobody sees. It's a small sin. Nobody knows what I'm doing in the back. I'm telling you, God is watching it. The videos that you're watching in your phone, the, the, the sins of masturbation or sexual sins, all this is causing the pain and suffering that you're going through in your life today. This is the main reason I'm telling you. Nobody can become holy in a day. It is impossible. Even after myself being saved, it's not immediately I become, I let go all these sins. I struggle a lot. I go through a lot of hardship. I know this is a sin. I must not do that, but I can't help myself. I was still in certain sins. But the prayer, fasting sets me free. Let me tell you something. If you are saved, if you are anointed by God, okay, it doesn't mean that you are free from sins. You will sin. But the only thing is that you can't enjoy that sin. Whenever you commit sin, you feel guilty. You feel very bad about it. When you look at the worldly people, they sin, they don't feel anything. They feel that it's common. It's just a life that they have to live. But when it comes to Christians, the believers, when they sin, they can't live a joyful life. They will always want to come out of their sins. And there will be a voice in their heart saying that, this is sin, you must not commit this. You must let go of this sin. This is the voice of the Holy Spirit. So these are the sins that are controlling the lives of the people. Paul says that, i doing what I don't want to do. And what I wanted to do, I can't do that. Something else is controlling you. But today the Lord is about to break. You see, the people, they were not enjoying the heart bondage. They were crying out. You need to cry out 
because of your sins say lord set me free from these sins i must come out of these sins this should be your cry when you repeatedly fast and pray and ask god to set you free he will see how serious you are about letting go of your sins he will empower you to let go of your sins and live a holy life you can't be saying that it's me this is my weakness i have to live with this no you have to do something about it you are only given one life and this one life you must live for jesus you must live it well for jesus you can't be saying that uh, i'm a human this is my nature from generation to generation we have this no god has given you one life so that you can be reborn and live in the likeness of christ so this is what you should understand today as we pray as we cry out to god i believe the bondage will be broken hallelujah